Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. Second part to this video on a Tesla. This is a Model 3 box that we're wiring. Actually goes for all the Tesla designs, but it charges. So got that all wired up, looks good. I'll show you from a back point of view. Again, we did not come off of that panel right there because we had it back to back to right here. And back to back means back to back. So right here, you can see in here, we did get our rubber, our plastic bushing on there and our rubber seal. Let's see if I can get that for you. Code talks about atmospheric temperature difference between a raceway. That's literally a conduit because it's less than 18 or 24 inches. It's more like about six. But I got it on both sides there, and I always run my ground. Now, I do land my ground in my neutral, of course. And which one do you think I'm probably going to use more of when it comes to grounding the Tesla? Insulated, bare, it's number six versus number ten. I'll leave that up to you. Um, the bottom line is we got this in, 50 amp breaker. And uh, we went ahead and got that tweaked at nine, between nine and A. Um, honestly, this wire for article 334 says it's good for up to uh, 90 degrees celsius and even though it was a 6.3 romix you know we still split that and left the jacket in that conduit um the other factor is is that you can't have romix outside this is true but this enters into a panel article 334 says use is not permitted uh, but keep in mind also here's a funny thing about tesla guys 310.120 states that uh, manufacturer's cord has to state the voltage, manufacturer, rating, ampacity, gauge size, and if it's extra hard duty or not. Article 400.1 talks about the SJO, SJJO, blah, 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 blah. All these different standards to basically state is the cord rated for extra hard duty. Tesla seems to be above everybody with their UL listing because they state none of that on their cord. So... And it's actually not like a hot tub out back being plugged in or a kid runs over. It's more like your car or your truck next to it could run over it. I'm not sure why Tesla gets away with that, but most of my inspectors would not let you get away with that. Uh, again, that would be uh, 310.120. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about is um, the evil car ratings on these cars state that Tesla has to have uh, max ability for any box. And so basically Tesla's box states that can be wired up to 80 amps. So you have to do 125% of its lowest charge and its highest charge. So your rating of your wire gets way up there. A lot of you guys know that when we carry a typical 6.3 NM cable, that that is good up to 60 amps. Yeah, really by the time you derate that because article 110.14C says anything under a number one gauge has to be at a 60 degrees Celsius column. So really it's only good for 50 amps. Um, personally, I don't think it would ever burn, especially if it doesn't have a voltage drop and it's tight and it's dedicated, but that's what the code states. So when you're wiring up these Teslas, a lot of these guys uh, that are selling them, no offense you sales guy, but a lot of these customers have been coming to me the last couple of months saying, oh, it just needs a 30 amp dryer plug. That's the minimum size of the box. 240 volt 30 amp up to 80 amp i have homes in loveland that wired up to 70 amp from 1905 1890 on all the president streets in loveland on roosevelt and you know yahoo all those but the king thing you got to keep in mind is that if we are wiring that and you're using aluminum tesla doesn't want aluminum landing on their lugs though their lugs are braided stranded very fine aluminum crimped on that box they still state that they want copper so to get copper in there you're piping it or you're using some kind of tray cable so keep in mind that we have to keep attentive to 310.15 b6 on what size wire and what it's derated at the cable's already manufactured that way so you don't have to worry about how many current carrying conductors the next page over um, so anyways keep that in mind when you're buying your tesla that I'm gonna end up giving three prices. Uh, if I have to go, if I can go up in an attic and back down, I'll give you an aluminum price, and that's gonna be 
number two, or I'm gonna give you a copper price with TC cable. And that's expensive. That's a lot more expensive. But you don't have to pipe. But if you have a garage like this, is there a bedroom above, two story, you may end up having to pipe it. And if you pipe it, then it's gonna be really a number one inch EMT, which isn't too bad, you know, still decent sized conduit. Again, here's gonna be a three quarter for you. I'm per pretty much used to using three quarter all the time. But what they're stating with some of my state inspectors, because I just went to my 2020 code class, they're not gonna allow it. So any inspectors watching our videos, yeah, we're gonna make sure we're doing this right. Um, it's It stinks though that you can't just tweak that right there where it says at nine or eight, because somebody could technically get in there and open up seven, no, nine screws and tweak it themselves. This is true, but uh, the breaker's still gonna catch and trip. The wire could melt. But here's the common sense to this. I mean, does your dentist check up on you that you brushed your teeth? No. But if somebody's gonna get in there and wreck their teeth, then what's the difference? If somebody's gonna get in there and wreck their house into the panel when they're not supposed to, because Article 90 says that if you're not qualified, you're not supposed to touch it. And a homeowner in my book is not qualified, especially to be wiring a Tesla. But hey, you know, that's a $100,000 vehicle or 140 or 60,000, 65. So I guess if you wanna roll the dice and take a chance, that's fine. But keep in mind that when you're wiring that Tesla, you know, we're liable. And um, you still gotta rate it based on Article 625. And it states that overcurrent protection has to be 125% and rated at its highest capacity that can draw. So, Again, there'll be three prices, you know, but I would personally think uh, keeping that at 50 amps is good, but Siemens might be a good way to go with the juice box because it limits it at 50. But some guys want to be charged an hour and a half to two, then go 80 amp. But you're going to pay for that one inch number four. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Hopefully it'll help you out. It's not as easy as you think it is. Later.